welcome back to another installment of Coming Soon, wherein I show you what I just got in the mail. Doesn't sound that interesting, but what this is in this box should be interesting. I actually have not looked at it yet. These are discs that are upcoming releases from various labels uh, that the MVD Corporation distributes. And let's just dig in. So I don't even know when these come out. So if you look below, this is just first reaction and, and description of what we have here. Look below in the notes and that will have uh, links to disc specs and buying links and release dates and all that. So we have from Synergetic, we have My Missing Valentine on DVD. This uh, Yang has always been fast, but when she wakes up the day after Valentine's Day, she does everything in her power to figure out how it mysteriously passed her by. This is from, uh, I don't see a year on this, 2020, 119 minutes in uh, English or Chinese language, I believe, and uh, 2.0 stereo. So that is my missing Valentine from Synergetic. Now, I realized the last time I did this, what I should really be doing is opening these things up so that you can see what the packaging looks like. I realize I get these super deluxe sets, sometimes far before anybody else can, before you can buy them. And I'm sitting here showing you how it looks in the shrink wrap, which is not what you really wanna know. You wanna see what the insides of these things look like. So the inside of this is, uh, well, it, it's, it's a disc. So nothing deluxe about that, but that's fine. Next up, in no particular order, I'm actually, if you look, I'm looking at these like this, so I don't even honestly know what's in this box. So from Scorpion Releasing and MGM, we have Opposing Force, where civilization ends and survival begins. This is a film I don't know. This is from 1986, rated R English, subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. This has a brand new 2019 HD master, new audio commentary with the director, Eric Carson, alternative ending and a trailer. This features Tom Skerritt, Lisa Eichhorn, and Anthony Zerby, Richard Roundtree. So, you know, it's got the cast going for it. Uh, the only, let me, let me give you a little of this. There you go. And can I read it that way? Man, sure, why not? The only female soldier uh, in a military experiment designed to stimulate, stimulate? Simulate POW torture conditions falls victim to the commanding officer, uh, the female officer being Lisa Icorn, the commanding officer being Anthony Zerby. Uh, the, he justifies insidious actions upon her as a training technique. When hero, Tom Skerritt, rebels uh, with her and tries to dust off the others, dust out the others, it causes an all-out war. Will anyone survive the opposing force? Also starring Richard Roundtree, John Considine, and directed by action veteran Eric Carson, who did The Octagon and Black Eagle. Now see this taut action film, a.k.a. Hell Camp, from a brand new HD master. So that's Scorpion releasing, which uh, has done some really interesting things. I haven't actually seen a lot of Scorpion releasing titles, interestingly enough. Um, so this might actually be my second Scorpion releasing uh, film. So need to come up with witty banter or remember to bring a blade with me when I do these in the future, lest you just look at my contorted face while I open shrink wrap. I guess some people are into that sort of thing. Uh, it's the Contorted Face YouTube channel. Uh. So you got your case, you got your standard Blu-ray case, and again, nothing too fancy, but you know, it all comes down to what's on the disc. The uh, extra packaging is just uh, extra. Next up, we have, also from Scorpion releasing an MGM title, we have P.O.W. The Escape, starring David Carradine. This, uh, the most dangerous mission, the most daring escape behind enemy lines. P.O.W. The Escape. So this has a, also a brand new 2019 HD master, new on-camera interviews with director Gideon Amir, screenwriter James Bruner, and stuntman Steve Lambert, and the original trailer. This was a uh, Golan Globus. This is a canon film. Washington sends an army led by Colonel Cooper, that's David Carradine, to rescue POWs in Vietnam, but it fails and Cooper is captured. In an attempt to make a profitable escape with stolen money before the U.S. pulls out of a war, a corrupt North Vietnamese prison camp commander, Mako, nice, not the jaws of death, but the actor, uh, it forces his prisoners along with Cooper to go with him to ensure his safe passage. Also starring Steve James from American Ninja, Charles Floyd from Rappin, and Phil Brock from American Ninja. So uh, yeah, this is a, a title that I had known. I actually have this on videotape uh, at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater in Lehigh, in Pennsylvania, where I work. We have a wall, uh, we call it the Wall of VHS, and it is literally that. It is a wall of VHS tapes that we have for sale. People donate them to us and then we sell them and it's a way for the theater to make a little money and a way for fans of VHS to uh, get a little VHS. 
And uh, on that wall there was, I think there's been more than one copy of the original uh, Canon home video of this. So we open it up and again, it is uh, it is just the disc. So that's cool from Scorpion releasing. Next up, ooh, this is what I'm excited about. From Cauldron Films. I've really been liking Cauldron Films. I've never seen any of their titles until recently. And then I just uh, watched and if you look elsewhere, I've reviewed, uh, what was it? It was Beyond Terror, Contraband, and uh, another title. It's some recent reviews that I've done. I really liked the stuff Cauldron's put out. So this is uh, Shanghai Joe. This is from 1973. I believe it's a Spaghetti Western Martial Arts mashup. Uh, 235 widescreen, 98 minutes, English or Italian audio, English subtitles. Special features, uh, Samurai Spirit interview with Master Katsoshi Michiyama. I'm gonna always man mangle these names when I'm reading them on air, uh, on, air on video like this. East Meets West, Italian style, visual essay by film historian Eric Zaldivar, commentary by Mike House from the Spaghetti Western Digest, trailer, image gallery. So this is, I'm not gonna hold this up and try to read it. Uh, Chin Ho arrives in America looking for a better life only to be faced with locals that don't take kindly to outsiders. Sadly, a common story. Much to their surprise, Chin is not your average drifter as he rips his way through racist bad guys with unstoppable fighting techniques. So it's a, it's a, it's a Kung Fu Western, and I'm a spaghetti Western, so I'm all for that. Shanghai Joe from Scorpion Release, not Scorpion, from Cauldron Films. What was that all their Cauldron Films? Crimes of the Black Cat, I also watched and really liked. They do a really great job. And uh, they're, uh, it, they're attached to, they're related to Diabolic DVD, some of the same folks who do that, and Exhumed Films out of uh, Philadelphia. And just really good transfers, really good uh, eclectic titles, retro titles that in, in many cases are making their Blu-ray debut, certainly in this country, but sometimes worldwide. And uh, good solid extras too. So they don't, they don't mess around at, uh, at Cauldron. So here we get, this is, I like this. So you get the reversible cover and the clear case so that you can see what your reversible cover is, even if you don't reverse your reversible cover. Shanghai Joe from Cauldron Films. Again, as with all of these, I say this like you're joining me in progress. I used to do this show on TV. Parts of this kind of still do air on TV. So for TV, you never know if somebody was gonna tune in late, so you would repeat things. But for a YouTube video, I, I presume you're not starting this in the middle. Convoy Busters. Maurizio Merli and Estelvio Massey film. Truckloads of explosive action. This is, I always get this wrong. This is a Euro crime film, Italian cop movie. Poliziotteschi, I, I probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, what we have here is from 1978, 100 minutes, 185 widescreen English or Italian um, audio, English subtitles, special interview, ooh, cool. Special features, interview with Maurizio Merli, interview with Danilo Massani. I'm gonna mangle all these names, I'm sorry. Uh, extra, Maurizio Merli, a lethal hunter of subtle variation with tough guy film expert Mike Malloy. Commentary by Mike Malloy and Mike Martinez. Archival interviews with Ruggiero Diodato, Enzo Castellari, and more. Trailers, image gallery. This sounds fantastic. So what we have here while I read from the back, after brandishing his gun and badge too many times in front of powerful people, Maurizio Merli is busted down from homicide to emergency squad. It still sounds kind of cool. The, despite his demotion, he is not content with letting Rome's criminal element run rampant and his violent nature soon, this just sounds great, soon finds him the target of both the press and the local mob. After a bloody attempt on his life, he is transferred to a quiet coastal town to run a local department, but never one to let things alone. He quickly finds a dangerous smuggling ring using the cover of the sea and darkness to run their operations in his sleepy district. The film plays better than I can say it. Convoy busters. Can't wait. Uh, I really is a fan of these movies. Arrow's been putting out a lot of these Euro crime films. They had that Years of Lead set that had at least one Maurizio Merli film. I'm a big fan of his anyway, and uh, th these movies are just great. It's one of those genres that was never really well covered in the U.S. in terms of the, their theatrical release or their video release. So it's kind of like discovering all these new gems in an era and an overall genre that you love but it's like all this, these new 70s movies, basically. So we crack it open once again, and we've got the disc and a reversible cover. And what a rever wow, what a reversible cover. So if you can see that there. So once again, you can enjoy it without reversing it. If you choose to reverse the curse or not. So you've got new art and the original art on the inside. And then lastly, I actually have something else I want to show you too. But lastly, we have also from Scorpion releasing, The Wicked Die Slow a bold new Western in widescreen and color. 
I know nothing about this. So let me, let's me let's find out together, shall we? This is from 1968. It's 100 minutes, not rated in English. Uh, special features may not be rated. So the special features are brand new 2019 HD scan of the original film elements and a new on-camera interview with Jeff Canoe. This stars Gary Allen, Steve Rivard, and Helen Stewart. I know nothing about this. So I'm gonna to read to you from the back of the box once again. A hard-edged Western in which, okay, so it's a Western, which I suppose uh, the word Western on the front should have tipped me off to. A hard-edged Western in which notorious gunfighter The Kid, Gary Allen, and his Mexican sidekick Armadillo, Jeff Canoe, who apparently was in Revenge of the Nerds, Gotcha, and Tough Guys, saddle their way through the post-Civil War West looking for the four drunken and sadistic Native Americans they use the word Indian, but I'm going to class it up and say Native Americans, who raped the kid's girlfriend. It's a 70s movie. It's a late 60s movie. Something about 70s genre films, it was like it was like rape was a requisite for funding in these movies. Rather distasteful now, but it was a staple of the genre back then. Uh, as they trek, they come upon a band of outlaws who beat up an old man and his daughter and also raped another woman. The kid and the armadillo decide to take the law into their own hands and first kill the gang of outlaws and then go after the Indians. I'm not going to read any more because I don't want to give any more of the plot away. So it sounds like just like a good, nasty 70s, I keep saying 70s, a good, nasty 60s western. Indie Western. So I'm uh, I, I'm a fan of the films of the 60s and the style of the films of the 60s and 70s. So anytime there's, as I said earlier, a new 70s movie or a new 60s movie to me, uh, that's kind of cool. So again, there's the cover and then we open it up and we have uh, nothing fancy, just the disc, but that's cool. And this is apparently owned by MGM. So I'm not sure who originally released this. I'll, I'll tell you in my full review, this says Canon. So it might have been an early release from, uh, Canon Films didn't really become Canon Films until the 80s, but they existed as a releasing company. So I don't know if this was a pre Golan Globus Canon or uh, something else. So this is apropos of nothing. So if you're interested in any of those titles, interested in more of any of those titles, any of the specs, go in the notes under here and I've got links to the uh, street date, the Amazon pre-sale codes. A lot of times they discount them pretty heavily too and uh, you can go to those links to find the specs. So I also put in an order, which I don't often do, from Vinegar Syndrome. Vinegar Syndrome, a great cult label that I'm sure a lot of you who watch this stuff already know, and they have these uh, partner labels that they deal with and they distribute, and I think they help manufacture them too. And they recently, this week, this actually arrived very fast, Earlier this week, as I record this, like two days ago or three days ago, I put in this order for a bunch of their AGFA, American Genre Film Archive discs, because I'm a big fan of what AGFA does and what they release and their library. Part of what I do in my, my role at the Mahoning Drive-In in Lehigh in Pennsylvania is work with AGFA to help put on uh, virtual screenings for the Patreon program that we have there. And I'm not trying to sell you that, I'm just telling you. I've seen what the AGFA library has. They, re they represent a ton of stuff. And they're working now with uh, the classic independent film uh, label, uh, Something Weird Video, to put out a lot of stuff that were old, Something Weird tapes and DVD-Rs in the old days, and are now like these really nice new uh, HD releases. So I went kind of hog wild here, and I bought, <laughs> perhaps against my better judgment, the complete set of Doris Wishman films that, the, that AGFA has released. So you have the, in case you haven't seen a review of this elsewhere, I'm just gonna show you what I got. I may review these ultimately. Uh, the stuff that's for me takes a bit longer for me to get to because as you see, I get these stacks of things to review. So the review discs always take precedent over what I'm gonna watch for myself. But in case you haven't seen anybody do this yet. So the films of Doris Wishman, The Daylight Years, include Nude to the Moon, Blaze Star Goes Nudist, Hide Out in the Sun, Gentlemen Prefer Nature Girls, Diary of Nudist, and The Prince and the Nature Girl. So these are all nudist camp movies that she made. And it comes with a nice slip case. And it's really heavy, good stock too. And a nice little scan of the film with like an old disclaimer. And then you open this up. To, oh, it's another slip case. Double slip. And then you have the cover. And uh, for you, I'll break the seal on these. A lot of times with my own stuff, I kind of don't break the seal right off just because should I decide, uh, should I see it some other way or should the disc go out of print before I get a chance to watch it and I decide, you know, the fact that this thing is $300 on eBay, uh, it, it might be worth more to me than the experience of watching it. I'm just gonna let that sealed disc go. Uh, let's see. The amount of time I've struggled with this plastic has been compressed for time for the sake of your viewing entertainment. So we have the disc and it opens up and we have multiple discs with multiple extras. Ooh, it's fallen out. It's intact. Little, uh, little, little booklet here, little reversible cover, 
oh, which I won't show you because there's nudity in there since these are nudie films. Yeah, I'm not gonna show you much of any of this because it's filled with nudity. So the, yeah, these were early early nudie exploitation films where nudity wasn't really legit. It wasn't doable in mainstream films, but if you couched it as a documentary or a film about the naturism lifestyle, you could get away with it. So I find old exploitation fascinating. I just find, I love all genres of movies. So uh, let me tell you what we get here. So on disc one for Nude to the Moon and Blaze Star Goes Nudist, these are very high caliber films. Restoration from the original 35 millimeter camera negatives. Nude on the Moon commentary with director Frank Henenlotter and filmmaker Anthony Sneed. Blaze Star Goes Nudist. Commentary by Wishman biographer Michael Bowen. Theatrical trailers. Daylight Years photo gallery. Booklet with writing from Something Weird's Lisa Petrucci and a vintage Doris Wishman interview. Disc 2, Hide Out in the Sun. Preservation from Doris Wishman's personal 16 millimeter print. Hide Out in the Sun commentary with Wishman biographer Michael Bowen. Gentlemen Prefer Nature Girls. Restoration from the original 35 millimeter camera negative. Unseen Doris Wishman interview from 1974. That's interesting. Interesting. Theatrical trailers. Disc three, Diary of a Nudist and Prince and the Nature Girl. We have a restoration from the original negative for Diary. Uh, commentary with queer film historian Elizabeth Perchell for Diary. Princess and the Nature Girl preservation from the only existing 35 millimeter reader elements in German, in German with English subtitles. And this is a region A, B, and C release. So as I like to say, if you're watching me anywhere in the world and you want this uh, fine piece of film history, uh, it'll play in your player. Then we have the films of Dora Swishman, The Moonlight Years, which gets into, I think, the roughy kind of area. And we have Bad Girls Go to Hell, Indecent Desires, Another Day, Another Man, My Brother's Wife, A Taste of Flesh, The Sex Perils of Paulette, Too Much Too Often, The Hot Month of August, and Passion Fever. That's a lot of films. I'm gonna guess that they're not very long. So, and then again, you get a nice little slip cover on that, which allows the disc to slip right out. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna struggle with a wrapper on this one. The, the inside is is not crazy. So, uh, Bad Girls Go to Hell, you get uh, disc one. It's Bad Girls Go to Hell and Decent Desires and a Taste of Flesh. You get 2K restorations from the original 35 millimeter camera negatives. Uh, preser Taste of Flesh preserved from the Something Weird video SVHS Master. Unfortunately, that's sometimes all that's left. Bad Girls Go to Hell commentary with director Frank Henenlotter and filmmaker Anthony Sneed. And Decent Desires commentary with queer film historian Liz Purcell. Theatrical trailers, booklet with writing from Something Weird videos, Lisa Petrucci and a vintage Doris mentioned in an interview by actor by, uh, by Mike Watt. I'm trying to pick up the pace here. Disc two, another day, another man. My brother's wife and Passion Fever. You get two K restorations from the original negatives. Passion Fever preserved from the Something Weird SVHS master. My brother's wife commentary with Wishman biographer Michael Bowen. Tr theatrical trailers, Moonlight Years photo gallery. Disc three, the sex perils of Paulette. The hot month of August. Too much too often. Two K restorations from the original negatives on those. Uh, too Much Too Often was preserved from the Something Weird SVHS Master, and you get the theatrical trailers. Once again, this is a region ABC, so this will play anywhere in the world. If you import this to wherever you may live in this world of ours, this uh, AGFA Something Weird Vinegar Syndrome disc will work for you. And again, packaged in a really nice, nice sturdy case there. Number three, we have the films of Doris Wishman, The Twilight Years. We have Deadly Weapons, Double Agent 73, The Immoral Three, The Amazing Transplant, Let Me Die a Woman, Keyholes Are for Peeping, and Love Toy. These are the titles that are the least for normal people. So, and again, I'm gonna make sure I can do this without exposing anything on toward here. We have uh, the nice hard cover. We get the slip case that has an image from one of the Chesty Morgan films and Dora Swishman's kind of cute uh, title there for her directorial self. Uh, that's what the cover looks like. Once again, keeping it all above board here. Disc one is Deadly Weapons and Double Agent 73. If you don't know about these movies, um, I'm not gonna tell you. But if you do know about these movies, you're never gonna forget these movies. So 2K restorations from the original negatives on both. Deadly Weapons commentary with Doroth Wishman biographer Michael Bowen. Deadly Weapons uh, commentary with Bleeding Skulls, Annie Choi and Joseph Zimba. A Double Agent 73 commentary with Frank Henenlotter, theatrical trailers, booklet with writing from Lisa Petrucci and a vintage Doris Wishman interview by Peggy Awa. And sorry if I'm mangling all these names. Disc two is The Amazing Transplant and Let Me Die a Woman. Those are both sex changed uh, documentaries or dramas. 2K restorations from the original negatives. Let Me Die a Woman has a commentary with artist and porn performer Ricarta Monier. Theatrical trailers, Twilight Years, Photo Gallery, Disc 3, The Immoral 3, Keyholes Are for Peeping and Love Toy. 2K restorations from the original negatives. The Immoral 3 has a commentary with film programmer Lars Nilsson and Ag Agfa's Brett Berg, who I know. And uh, theatrical trailers, once again, uh, region A, B, and C on this set. So you weirdos from wherever you are in the world, 
uh, can watch that. And I proudly uh, count myself as one of those. I was never a big fan of Doris Wishman films, funny enough. A lot of times these new releases, these new restorations will be something that makes me want to reassess something because when I watched them in the past, I just thought they were poorly made. But I, I recognize her, her status as like an icon in the, the exploitation world and as the world of female directing and all that. So, oh, there's one of these. I don't, I, well, this is YouTube. I can say anything, right? Okay. So we have the Agfa Horror Trailer Show. I actually saw this in the theater. This is uh, 80 minutes of just wacky, wild trailers and snack bar ads and weird little commercials from 35 millimeter sources from the Agfa Library. The Agfa Library runs deep and bizarre. We host Agfa at our drive-in every year. We did it last year. It's not been announced yet, but we're gonna do it again this year. We do this thing called the Agfa Triple Ripper, where it's three films from the Agfa vault that are just incredibly rare, incredibly crazy, super deep dish, and in between we have Agfa trailers that play. So, um, Unleashed from the Dungeon of the American Genre Film Archive, the Agfa Horror Trailer Show is a senses-shattering compilation of the most spine-ripping, slime-slinging, soul-shredding horror trailers that you've ever seen. I won't go on and on. That's what it is. It's just, it's insane stuff. Scanned in 2K from a newly struck 35 millimeter theatrical print, which is actually how I saw this. I saw a theatrical print of this in, I was on the road right before COVID hit, and they, they ran this at one of the Alamos. I want to say I might have been, uh, I think it was Raleigh, North Carolina, which had an insane video vortex video store, which is like all the coolest parts and the coolest tapes from every video store and DVDs from every video store you ever went to back in the old days. They, it's like they took all the best stuff and put it in one video store. The place was amazing. So you get a commentary by the Agva team. You get a short called Say Goodbye to Your Brain, a found footage horror experiment, bonus movie, the Agva Horror Trailer Show Video Rage, a full-length mixtape celebrating the wildest shot on video and direct video trailers from the uh, Video Dungeon. Once again, it is all region. Once again, I'm going to attempt to crack open the uh, wrapper on this to show you what the inside looks like. I, I found a tool in the time that you didn't see. So what do we have here? The thrill of unboxing. We have, uh, that's kind of cool. So you have the disc and what you have on the inside is uh, basically like a film bed, film scans of 35 millimeter film, which is something I know well, once again, not that I'm advertising, but working at the Mahoning Theater, Drive-In Theater in Lehighton, Pennsylvania, our whole deal is that it's all 35 millimeter all retro. So we, we, we traffic in 35 millimeter film. Uh, we have, this is, this is a classic. This is a something weird classic. She Freak. You'll wince in dismay when you see She Freak. It's essentially a remake of Todd Browning's Freaks with a female lead. It's a really cool uh, slipcover. These things, go, people go crazy for these slipcovers. They, they do a limited number of them and they go out of print and they become highly collectible. This is what the actual disc looks like if you're gonna buy it somewhere. And this was a film produced by Dave Friedman, directed by, I'm not sure, and uh, David Friedman, if you don't know him, was, he was a carny. He was a carny and he worked, I believe, at Paramount in, in publicity for a while. Hooked up with, uh, with uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis and did the infamous gore films like Blood, Blood Feast and 2000 Maniacs. And then Friedman went off on his own to do a lot of exploitation, uh, softcore movies, horror movies, all kinds of, all kinds of things, anything that would make a buck. And uh, just a, a really wild, wild, wacky guy. Fun guy. Has a, if you ever hear David Friedman commentaries, which I believe this has, he had done for something weird years before he passed away. Uh, they're highly entertaining. He had a way, way to turn a phrase. Directed by Bro Byron Mabe from 1967 in color. Uh, fed up with waitressing Jade Cochran embarks on a life with a traveling carnival, but she discovers that what lurks behind the curtain doesn't take too kindly to her backstabbing plans. A gutter noir reworking of Todd Browning's Freaks and a Valentine to the Carnival lifestyle that defined the career of producer David F. Friedman. She Freak is a snapshot of life, love, and revenge on the grounds of a seedy carnival in small town USA. And I've seen bits of this transfer. It looks phenomenal. It looks so much better than it did in the old days of the Something Weird tapes just because Technology has gotten better. So we have a 4K restoration from the original negative, archival commentary with David Friedman and Something Weird video founder Mike Franey, Asylum of the Insane, She Freak inserts preserved in 2K, The Laughing, Leering, Lampooning Lures of David F. Friedman. It's a feature-length compilation of trailers from the Something Weird vaults newly preserved in 2K. I think I actually have bought that DVD right before uh, Something Weird decided they weren't, they announced they weren't gonna do DVD-Rs or they were gonna vastly scale them back. So I bought a whole bunch and then, now I'd have one less disc I need to have on the shelf. Vintage shorts from the Carnival Midway promotional photo gallery booklet with essay by something weird's Lisa Petrucci. 
again, all region. And, oh, this is cool. So we have a, uh, a booklet, no glare, booklet, uh, shooting script, freak show, original screenplay by David F. Friedman, and then just a whole lot of photos and writing. That's neat. A reversible cover, nice, which has the, tr the cover, uh, the original poster is the other, other cover. So that's really nice. This is a really nice set. Um, as with a lot of the David Friedman movies, they're not all great, but they're an incredible slice of life. If you want to see what a carnival was like, what the Midway and the Sideshow was like, and like a rural carnival in 1967, that movie's going to show you. We have the shock o -rama Video Party. This is the Naked Witch, Violated, Ghosts of Hanley House, and Passion in the Sun. These are four tiny, independent, regional rarities uh, in the 1990-something video, hypnotized the generation of movie maniacs by another thing, the most radically surreal genre of films of all time, all via the magic of VHS. Shakarama Video Party is a hallucinogenic tribute to those cathode ray-fueled days featuring our regional horror blast preserved from the original something weird SVHS masters. As the film elements have been lost, this collection serves as a time machine to a beloved era in home video history. Now, I, I bought a lot of the old something weird tapes. I'm used to watching movies that were uh, bootlegs and multi-generational VHS. That's why I talk about in a lot of these um, new restorations that we're getting on Blu-ray in, in my reviews that it is unbelievable how gorgeous some of these things look because back in my day, you, 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 you got what you could get and, and, and you were happy with it. When I first saw Argento's Floor Flies on Grey Velvet, which recently has had a 4K release by uh, Severin, I believe, that looked so bad, but I was so excited to see this movie that you couldn't see any other way, and you, you just you'd made do with it. You've, you could sort of hear it and understand it, you could pretty much see what was going on, and you got the idea of what the movie was. So if, if they're going to put out discs that are from SVD, SVHS masters, they're not going to look any worse than the old Something Weird tapes did. They just aren't going to look like these new 4K releases. So uh, special features, uh, Naked Witch commentary with director Larry Buchanan and Nathaniel Thompson, shocked out trailers and drive-in snipes, watch the full uninterrupted program in an all-light summer party mode. That's cool. That was a thing that was done in the early days of DVD, too. You'd have Image put out these drive-in disc sets where it'd be two movies, and they would put the snack bar trailers before and between and movie trailers and intermission reels, and it would be like you were watching, you know, watching it at a theater. So that's what the cover looks like. And we crack it open, and we've got uh, a nice uh, interview with Mike Vraney. That's cool. Just text interview. And then we get a reversible cover. So that's uh, a cool set. I have one more thing. So if, if you're watching this with children right now, put the kids to bed. Get the kids out of the room. Because I'm going to say a word that I'm, I'm just talking about a cat. This is, this is, okay, this is one of the, this, something weird lives up to its name with this. This is one of the weirdest movies I've ever uh, owned and seen. It's one of the weirdest adult films I've ever seen. This is... So uh, what this is, so if you've ever, it's not sexy. So this is a triple X film with, with somewhat of a story. Basically the idea is that the, the titular is this crime fighter who hops around on one of those, they called them space hoppers back in the 70s. Big inflatable ball, almost like a yoga ball now with a handle on it. She hops around town to, 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 to right the wrongs of the evils that are going on in, in her Gotham City. And for some reason, she she comes into the, 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 I guess it's a bedroom, of this couple, this really, um, not the most photogenic couple, who are having really not the most salacious uh, intercourse in this film, and are basically very lazily, kind of occasionally doing something and just insulting each other. I think it's all improv. And eventually... Um, she gets involved. It's 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 something you really have to see to believe. It's kind of hilarious. It's the kind of movie that you suffer through once. It's like the ring tape. It's the kind of movie you suffer through once, and then you kind of you, you got to show somebody else. You can't just keep it to yourself. You'll 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 die from the madness of just being the only person who saw this. So uh, you need to show it to somebody else and kind of just watch them watch the movie. So um, yeah, it's 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 quite something. So we have the, the inside there. We have. Uh, I was afraid I'm gonna crack the disc when I take it out. Yeah, I'm not gonna show you what it says under that. It's a cartoon depiction of the female. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna show you what the inside of this looks like at all, because it's really coarse dialogue. And, I, and, and uh, you know, although I'm talking about a film called, I'm trying to keep it uh, you know, uh, above board here. 
you know, sh should you be watching it with the family? So there is an article about uh, how the, f the, the print of this film was found. And I, I believe this is a new uh, restoration from the previous release that was out on, on DVD and Blu-ray. And um, it's really ridiculous. It's really not sexy. It's just something that kind of has to be seen to be believed. So I, I've been rambling for a half hour. This is insane. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take up this much of your time. I'm not offended if, for those who tuned out before this was over. Uh, essentially, I'll be reviewing most of those things eventually on video. Again, look in the comments or look in the description and I'll show you when this stuff's all coming out and where you can get it. And I thank you for joining me. Until next time, I am Mark and I will see you at the movies.